Here you go. Scott Lawfer, VW Paradise. Okay, Scott, as always, we have to start out with uh, what's your VW story? How did you get into VWs? I used to be a manager of a grocery store and worked on cars on the side a lot, kept them running. And somebody at the store one day says he had to open his own business. And I thought, well, maybe I ought to. <laughs> and here we are. So it's done nothing but grow since, you know. The boys, having my two sons has been a blast, getting to race and work with them, be around them all the time. The growth has just been phenomenal. So you opened what, in 19, 1980, I think, right? 1979, yep. 1979. It was kind of on a bet, right? It was uh, <laughs> kind of kind of like that, yeah, yeah. I'd worked for the stores, like I said, for 10 years at the time. I was, I was a key carrier and, and uh, didn't have much interest in that. You know, I mean, I busted my ass for them, obviously, but uh, uh, I had more interest in the cars. And then and my brother-in-law, who now works for me at the time, I thought was going to be my main employee. And he ended up getting a better job. <laughs> so I couldn't ask <laughs> him to take a chance with me. And then we've just grown to this point, and now he works for us. So, so. Now, now were, were you married at the time, Scott? Yes, I was. Okay. Yeah, both How? kids were already born. Wow. Uh, Jason was probably... You know what, a three, four year old age there, and Christopher is, you know, two years, a year and a half behind him. Uh, now, was uh, was Molly working, or did she stay at home with the kids then? She was kind of still working for for the grocery stores too. We both worked for the grocery stores at the time, and then uh, the more time went, she didn't work at all, and then then she worked into saying that she thought parts was a was a neat idea, and we decided to opened up the parts, too, and, and they were in two different locations. We were a block apart at the time. Really? And uh, and then when we got this building, you know, it just, it's gotten to what it is. Uh, this this building here is 14,390 square feet. We didn't think we'd use it up, and now we don't have enough room to do what we need to do. You know? <laughs> so it just keeps growing. You know, every, every time you think you get your feet on the ground, it just a little more happens. How, how, uh, how nerve-wracking were those first couple of years with the business? And it was beyond that. I mean, at the point, you know, like you'd say, you say, you couldn't even afford to pay attention. It was, you were, <laughs> you went from doing okay to, to being broke in a heartbeat, you know. Uh-huh. Uh, especially being used to having an income every week, you know, having a paycheck, and then you work for yourself. You had a real urge to pay all the bills for the business and not take anything home. Right. And then, you know, so it, it was real tough at first. Uh, you know, it's not like it's, I mean, we do real well now, but I mean, it's not like we're, we're on top of the world. We enjoy what we do. That's why we do it even on, you know, both Christopher and Jason were here even this weekend, Saturday and Sunday, working on stuff. We like what we do. Now, I was going to ask you, do you think uh, the reason they work so hard like that, you know, because whenever I talk with Jason, he's always staying late or coming back, uh, uh, him and Chris all, both. Do you think they saw that, they saw you doing that in the beginning and that's just how they learned that? You know, it could be. You know, I, we, I used to work, you know, 16, 18 hours a day. The boys were with me a lot. I mean, Literally in diapers, they 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 were here, and uh, they were. We used to have customers think, "God, them kids are dirty," but <laughs> I always thought they'd clean up, you know. And they they, I let them try anything, you know. And even to this day, if they tell me there's something new that we ought to have, if they can tell me why it'd be good, we buy it. And and, uh, and surprisingly enough, we've got a, an awful lot of equipment here, you know. I just talked with Jimmy Larson last week, and he saw he came down here a week or two ago and said, "Wow, I didn't realize you had that much stuff." He that he made himself at home and walked around on a Saturday when I wasn't here. And, right. uh, was quite impressed with the amount of equipment we did have. Well, you know, I think people are sometimes they think uh, that you know you just this just all happened for you overnight. Um, when did you really kind of realize that you know what? Um, I think we got something here. You know, we were like you say, being on that ragged edge of being broke in 1984. I got bought out of the business. And took a whole year off and uh, didn't work at all. Took a whole year off and uh, played around with Koi and in my pigeons and doing my thing and uh, and uh, enjoyed myself. Uh-huh. And the guy didn't make the final payment and I took it back. And uh, from that point on, I looked at it a lot different as a business and the amount of stuff that we did. It was, it was, uh, it grew from that point. At that point, I took it back. We had one car in the lot. By the end of the week, we were, you know, I'd put out an advertisement that, 
it was Scott's VW Paradise and Scott's back, and, and boy, did we get a lot of work fast. <laughs> and, uh, it it just took off and kept getting bigger. And the more the kids got involved, these days, ninety percent of the people don't even know who Scott and Molly is. You know, they'll say, you know, we we went into, you know, I'm building a, a '56 Nomad right now, and uh-huh. and uh, we walked into a and the guy goes, oh. Aren't you Jason's dad? <laughs> yeah, don't even have a name now. Oh. <laughs> so, yeah, the kids, they're in the limelight a little bit more. And you couldn't be more proud, you know, with Jason making Motor Builder of the Year and Chris are in the Dragster and the Fabricate. You know, we do the stuff for Redline and everybody. It's just uh, the stuff they'll run with. They take anything I've taught them and, and gone triple fold on what they can do with it. They, uh, Like I say, you surround yourself with smarter people than you, and boys impress me. They do, they do an excellent job. Well, l- let's talk a little bit about the racing side. So you, you started with, the, you had a, what, a 67 sedan? Yeah, we had a, it actually was a 64. Okay. 64 Bug. It was called Ice Blue. That was one of our first cars. It was a 12-second car. And when it got in the 11s, then we tinkered and kept going. and It's just uh it's evolved every, every, you know, every time you go out, you want to go faster. And, <laughs> well, you do. <laughs> yeah. We're never happy with what it is. If we did that, we know we could do just a little more. And we used to do it on such a shoestring budget that, you know, it was used parts from around the shop. We had a crank polisher. We'd redo cranks, you know, I mean, some of these stuff you couldn't have, couldn't have thrown in a customer's car if you wanted to. But, you know, if R threw it on the ground, you could do it again, you know. So we did a lot of this stuff for years, you know. Um, then when we got... We ended up purchasing a car. I was I tried to do it all aspirated at first. That was a big deal about not doing it turboed. And uh, once I did the uh, once I did the uh, first turbo car, we purchased uh, a car that was well known at the time called Hot Sauce. It used to be Dave K. Wells and Mark yeah, Billiards. Yeah. And uh, we got into that car. I mean, the boys, neither one of the boys were even driving age by that point. <laughs> and uh, we got that car to run all the way down to 950. And it was nowhere near safe enough. So, uh-huh. um, it uh, just kept going. Yeah. So, you Did know, and, and, and then then we started getting into the dragsters and stuff. And, and uh, you know, the dragsters, the first one, the second run down the track, we had a major, it was my fault, but it had a, I, I left it in drive. I hadn't ran with an automatic before. I left it in high and launched it overloaded and, and flamed ahead and cut right through the gas tank. And had a major fire. That was in Carlsbad, right? That actually yeah. caught your suit on fire. And... It caught my suit, burned my beard clear up into my helmet, uh-huh. burned my hair even. It was it was scary for me, let alone the boys watching it. You uh-huh. know? And the only reason we even put that out was the boys were... It, Jason always carried fire extinguishers in his car. And uh, the track really wasn't... Their fire extinguishers were out of... You know, nothing worked. You know? <laughs> oh, great. So our fire extinguishers put it out. The car was pretty well burnt. You know, we put it back together. It never, never accomplished what we wanted. It did. It was it was our introduction into dragsters, but it never did what we wanted. Yeah. Okay. Now. And then our next phase, you know, when we stepped to the, well, you know, they had that, they had that article on Hot VW on. Uh, Five ninety three. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> May of ninety three. They had all these pictures of everybody and little honorable mention at the bottom to watch out for me. You know, Scott Laufer of San Marcos, California, and, and it, we ended up being at the other end of that list now, you know. So. Right. How, how do you feel about kind of being the last man standing? Because in that article they said, and lastly, uh, Scott Laufer is building a car. It was just kind of a, um, a, a nod to, that you were building a car, but um, the tone of the article wasn't, I don't think they ever gave you serious consideration. Yeah, because there wasn't even, you know, ours was just a, you know, like we say, honorable mention, they threw your name in the hat. Right. <laughs> but it was, uh, didn't even warrant getting a picture or anything. Everybody else, they had this history of them and everything and, and what led up to it. And, and at that point, you know, we hadn't, we hadn't made a name for ourselves yet. It was very shortly after that we were taken off like wildfire, you know. Right. Uh, like I say, the boys, if it wasn't for them, but their interest, some of the, some of the things at tracks, you know, when you'd go and you'd run and then, um, you know, some of the guys at the top of the food chain would, would you know, make comments like they didn't think you could catch them. And you know, we not only caught them, we proved we could, you know. And 
And we have fun. We go to the race. If you can't go to this race and enjoy the people you're around, then, then you're doing the wrong thing because there's no money in this. Right. You know, if you can't go there, well, you even saw it at, at a couple of these races being with us. Uh, if you can't enjoy the people in the evenings, that's more fun than the race almost. You know, we have a blast when you can put on a show for the crowd. Right. But really, honestly, helping anybody, you know, like Eric Matson, when we met him, it, he needed a part, and we fixed it. And the next race, he needed something else. <laughs> we did this three or four times, and all of a sudden, he shows up with a big old VW Paradise sticker on and You know, we've just done a few tidbit things. We didn't think warranted any recognition. We would have done it for anybody. And uh, We enjoy it. You know, if people come up, you can weld anything you know uh we have the tig welders we can you know we we try to do everything we can to keep everybody interested because this is fun when everybody goes to have fun now is that kind of how it starts uh, you'll help out a guy here or there and then they just don't go away <laughs> you know that's kind of it it's uh um, most of you know like they're the, the boys very best friends are were original customers and turned into being literally family friends you know we start out and you realize how much people uh, appreciated what you did, and then pretty soon you're, you know, having dinner and you're doing things, and, and, and you're not just customer uh, relationship anymore. Right. Uh, Gene Conaway that goes out with us and does most of the cooking, and he flies to most of the races. Had a dune buggy. We fixed it, and he since has gotten a, a real good promotion, and he's, he's, you know, close to retirement age and ended up in Sacramento. and But he... Uh, he wants to be at everything. Phil Brown was a customer. We met him at Carl's bed. His car needed a little help one day, and we helped him. And Jason Baker, the, the big bald guy, he's, he, he came in with a square back, and Jason got his radio working, and they went surfing together, and all of a sudden, you know, they're virtually inseparable, you know. Right. So now, it's just, uh, it turns into that way. Can you tell me about the time? Because as I remember, didn't you, you had a chop top bug. Um, isn't that the one that got rolled at Carlsbad? Yeah, yeah, second second weekend in it. It was uh, it was my birthday. <laughs> and, uh, Molly kept asking me what I wanted to do that day, and it was a Saturday, and we were just starting to get to where we'd be at the eleven second range, you know, uh-huh. breaking out of the twelves into the elevens. And, and she kept asking me, "What do you want to do tonight?" I said, "I want to go racing." And we, this, she's no, we're not going racing. And this went on all day long at work, and finally. It was okay, but we were going to do something afterwards. And and uh, we get out to the track, and one of the first runs, it it had a, a fuel uh, power wire came loose, so the car ran a 23-second quarter mile. And you hear the announcer just, you know, right. beat me down a lot. It's going to be a whopping 23 seconds. You know? And then uh, the next run, it, it just big old wheel stand and a bunch of stuff you know and the final run of the day i finally and then it ran at 11 59 so it made a real good pass you know for us uh-huh. and for our time and uh the next next thing that happened at night you know is, is molly and the boys had left and i told them i'd be home i was gonna run one more run and, and uh i went ahead and ran down the track and and some of the people in the pit i said the only thing i haven't done tonight is roll it and i, <laughs> and I did <laughs> you know? oh. it, the car actually lifted off the ground and went airborne and then you're able, it's, it's in such slow motion, you're able to do a lot of things. I'd shut the fuel off, did all the things, and it started, it hit the other guardrail, and it started rolling. And Well, it's really, it's mind-boggling how fast some of that stuff happens, you know. Uh-huh. So, wow. So, but, yeah, that gets your attention. Did, you get, did, you got <laughs> pictures of Christopher literally in diapers sitting on the roof in that thing. So, that you is, know, it's, uh, that's how long ago that was. <laughs> that is crazy. Did that make you want to stop racing? No. Had a car running by the following weekend. Wow. I, I better do it right away. wasn't a car. I kept it all. I only ran it once or twice. And then shortly after that, we put together a Manx, uh, Red Manx, and um, I ran that for many, many years. I had that one. And, and it got to the point in them days in the early 80s where it was uh, very, like, uh, it wasn't a good atmosphere in the pits, you know. Uh-huh. So, uh it was a little tough, you know. Uh, right. So I just got bored with it. We stopped racing for several years till the kids got old enough, you know. So, uh, and then when the kids started getting interested again, I ended up with a couple of my old cars sitting around. We started running it. And then the, the evolution started. You know, we went from another, we, we have that chopped up in our garage still. We're going to be bringing it out again. Um, really? It, it's it's uh, a 1968 came right off the, the boat had an electrical fire. 
and uh, never went to the street. It was it ended up being a race car right from day one, and uh, it uh, got a little history with it. And, yeah. you know, and I ran it, and then and Chris ran it up. You know, I gave it to Christopher, and uh, uh, and it just you know we've kept it. We just won't get rid of it. It's a nice car. Mm-hmm. Then we ended up with uh, hot sauce after that, and then we from since then we've had seven de- seven different dragsters. Right. <laughs> so it's gone gone through a few you know and, 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 and ups and downs with that you know we've had a couple where you didn't even go forward you know no. so you, you, the first one was it honestly almost didn't go as fast as hot sauce but we learned a lot on what you did with an automatic and stuff and then we were some of the first to try the gearboxes and then we went back to the automatic again and right because you could do more tuning with an automatic on the motor and uh-huh. make the power you know you, you guys actually tried a lot of things first. Like, weren't you one of the first cars to run turbocharged with the FI? Yeah, everybody thought we were going the wrong direction with that. Uh, you know? I, I thought that was insane. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we were told, you know, by people that it'd never work. And uh, guys like, you know, Bob Godfrey even told me that. And uh, we were just kind of like, well, geez, you know, it works so good on street cars, I don't see how it couldn't, you know. So it, uh, it just it, seems it a learning curve. Good being the thing you know so. yeah well it just seems the learning curve would have been so great you know it was just kind of counterintuitive for that i mean because that was like the middle of 90 and it just yep. you know kind of counterintuitive to 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 go to efi even though yeah that's where modern cars are but as far as the volkswagens go that that's a whole new set of problems to learn how to overcome um i, I don't know why you guys <laughs> decided you know let's let's make that happen yeah, it, it was it was a big try, but it was uh, um, it, it was just a you know a huge learning curve too. I mean, we went through a lot of years of not getting anywhere with it, uh-huh. and then it just grow, grow, grow. You know, once we started finding the direction, boy, the advantages to electronics because you can the things you learn. You know, you can right. see what it did or didn't do, or you can see if it did this, what happened when you did that. You know, and, takes the guesswork out. Yep, it took a lot of it out. So. Now, now tell me the story about when you kind of pass the reins from from driving from yourself to Chris. I love that story. Well, Christopher really showed a big interest into it, and I told him to to get his own, you know, the the pamphlet from NHRA to to apply for a license, and uh-huh. and and I told him that you know literally if whoever went the 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 fastest would be the driver that weekend, and and uh, when he when he was licensing, you know, he. Uh, you know, well, he's 100 pounds lighter, and he's he's real good at pays attention to everything. All the details are there, but he uh, he ended up his very first day with with a driver's license. He ran the 694. <laughs> so you know, he and I, the fastest I'd been was a 708. So you know, and he he took the record. He did good. So and and from that point on, I've only driven a couple times. I I opened my mouth once and said I hadn't been in the sixes because I'd been seven O's, and uh. We threw the green car together, and I went out and ran 680s, so I got that out of my hair, you know. <laughs> uh, now, l- let me ask you, what, uh, what are some, uh, do you have any bigger plans for next year? Um, I mean, really, when it comes to dragsters, you're the, really the only game in town. You know, they always talk about these other mythical cars that are supposedly out there, but nobody wants to bring them out. You know, it's funny how yeah, they'll, t- they'll tell you all these ones and how fast that they are on paper, but a lot of them haven't. You know, the no cobwebs have been shook off any of them, you know, and, and, uh, yeah, we do have, we got three dragsters still. We got, uh, uh, one of the old front engine cars is actually painted now, so it's, it's, it's going to come out next year. And, uh, it's going to have some new innovative ways. And we're honestly going to be throwing a Honda motor in one, too, and, uh, and running. And cool. We've been asked to try it, and, and we, we've already played with a Honda motor in a, in a street car, and it's, it's already doing real well. Uh, he's won, Three events in a row, and uh, in a street class, so it's 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 been real good for us, you know. So we'll we get that in a dragster. It'll be another another stepping stone in that direction, which I didn't even want to go that direction. I'm a Volkswagen diehard. Nothing really <laughs> to do with them, but uh, there's some some good to it. There's a lot we can learn with that too. Um, how does it feel to have that? A lot of your uh, competition are now your clients. You know, it it. We like it because we're not afraid to, to give them just about anything, you know, even like helping Ken Fisher out and, uh-huh. and doing his. And, and I just, uh, I, I enjoy this. So, you know, the more we could have out going, you know, if we beat them just because you were a better driver that day is the way you'd want to have it. 
not that you 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 know we do know that we can do what we can with a motor we'll spend the extra time for detail and, and to do the things uh, again you know the kids show me some of the stuff with the equipment and having to write things in the right place you know so you can do some of the stuff so um what was it 2000 or 2001 where it seemed like every time you guys went out you kept chewing up your own records <laughs> yeah that yeah, was a lot of fun where you it was small increments but it just kept going up and up and up and it was a lot of we went we tried to make it run so fast that we had to actually slow it down and we went faster we had to take power away and that's when we started going faster uh-huh. and then we had i mean it was doing a you know a tenth of a second at a time and you know, uh, one mile an hour and stuff, and and then we actually we had an old an old cam that I designed five or six years prior that that we uh, went ahead and ran, and it it took off, and uh, and that's when we jumped from the 180 mile an hour to 190s real quick, and then it went to 200 in a heartbeat. <laughs> so it was uh, it, it was real good for that. Um, tell me about. Uh now we've talked a little bit about the boys working there with you and everything. Um, what is probably the proudest thing for you about about each one of them? You know, just the professionalism both of them do. They're they're both absolutely excellent in their own categories of stuff. Mm-hmm. So, uh, uh, you know, Jason is a phenomenal motor builder, and I mean Chris is too. But in the way of fabrication and stuff, Christopher is not afraid to challenge and weld and do anything and he's never been schooled or anything on it he just takes off and does it and uh jason you know a friend of ours dad had a machine shop showed some of the the true ways of doing machine work so he doesn't do uh the quick way of centering a hole he dinner he, he makes sure he's dial indicated dead center and does things right right you know mm-hmm. so when when all of this started, did you ever think that you know twenty six years later you'd, you'd have still have the whole family around you all working together? Never would have thought it, <laughs> but, but wouldn't be here if it wasn't for that neither. Right, and the whole family is why you do it. Right, um, and and you've said on on numerous occasions that uh, if the boys le- lose interest in the dragster, then then that's over. It'd be done. Yeah, I, it's not. I don't do it because I want to be there as much. It's, it, you could not ask for any more than having your own son's with you and it's there's their their family's happy because they're with their dad too so um. well do do we have you're going to bring out another you're going to bring out one of the front front engine dragsters next year um and any you're going to play with the honda motor and i don't know if i knew what the third thing was that you're going to do next year well, we got the we got the third dragsters there too the orange oh. dragsters still here gotcha the black one has been painted and uh and then we got the blue rear engine dragster. So we got two front engine dragsters and a rear engine. And uh, so, yeah, we're gonna we'll have them all going. I want Jason licensed next year. I want him driving. He wants to, you know even if it's not something he likes, have the sensation while it's the opportunity's there because it's not the opportunity may not always be there. Right. You know to to say you you hopped in something like this and tried it is uh, something to. Uh, you know, you at least said you did it. You know, you right. know, when he talks to his kids or his grandkids, you know. So. Do you think people oversimplify how hard it is to go that fast? Oh, to drive. You know, they, everybody thinks it's money, and money almost is the least factor of it. It does take money to do some of it, uh-huh. but it takes a lot of drive, a lot of work, a lot of hours. Me and Chris and Jason and I are here a lot doing stuff and trying things and <laughs> thinking about things and coming up with different ideas and, and uh, still have the desire to go faster. You know, like for a lot of years, even with, when Dave and Tom held the record, the no, with no challenge, they slowed their car down and just made it where it was consistent and had nobody trying to beat them, where we want to break the record every time we go out. Our, our goal is to go faster. We don't, we don't go out to go look simple. Right. Well, you're in a unique position that uh, you have kids and grandkids. So tell me, where where, where do you think all this is going to be in the next five years? That's that's going to be a tough one to answer. Uh, <laughs> the Volkswagen end of it right now, I've had an awful lot of fun going out with Eric Madsen. Uh-huh. We built that motor, and, uh, and, I mean, the record was 909, and we took it all the way down to 860. And... Uh, 
you know, even, you know, Dean from Hobby W when he said to me, he says they expected it when we got involved. It wasn't like even a shock. Well, in some ways that's kind of a letdown to us because we, we, we still think, you know, that was a, that was a pretty good milestone. It was. Absolutely. You know, a good thing to do. And, but they, I guess they do just expect it. I mean, you look at Christopher's car, Christopher's street car is, <laughs> you know, every bit of an eight second car. And it really is a street car, you know. Right. It still has KYB shocks, nothing fancy or anything. So, you know, it's just, you know, you can do it, you can do it, I guess, you know. Uh huh. Well, you know, Eric actually was on the show and he said, uh, th- there's no way he'd ever be able to go, go as fast as he went, as quickly as he went, if you guys hadn't gotten involved. Uh, and he's, he's family people just like us. So I have, we have a blast with his family and, and him and us, we both say the same thing. We wish we lived closer together. We talk to each other a lot. Mm-hmm. He says he doesn't understand how he, fit in this easily but he, he's just so much like us it was easy to bring him in as part of the family <laughs> and, uh, and we have fun with him absolutely so you have no idea where this is going to be in five years you think no. it's going to be no, just no, like no, it is might do something we won't know that until next year you know when we're trying it yeah well um i know that you guys have been busy as hell and i know this is like the busy time for you yeah. because what people don't realize is when drag racing season's over, that the 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 dirt side of it, the off road side, is just kicking into full gear for yeah, you. Yeah, when we shut down the dragster, it's all it's, it's all buggies now. You know, <laughs> we wouldn't have time for the dragster if we wanted to right now. Um, did you ever have any desire to try any of the off road stuff? Yeah, a little bit. The boys have actually dabbled in it a little bit with uh, um, uh, some of the class five and. And stuff, and, and they actually went out and drove a car, rode in a car. They didn't drive it. They rode in a car two weeks ago, and, and they both had a real good time with it. Right. And uh, again, same thing. You know, he, it, it won its class for the year, but again, it's back to you know taking a sixteen hundred cc motor and making you know sixty some horsepower to the ground with it. You know, and and then it's a good suspension. It, it, it has a lot of fun. They they took turns rotating in and out of the car and still won the thing by fifty some minutes. You know. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. Well, Scott, you're my hero, as you know. And.